Okay, let's look at another example. Um, now, this at first glance might appear to be exactly the same as the last example. So you may be wondering what's changed. There's one key ingredient that's changed compared to the previous problem, and it's right here. This time, we want to revolve about the y-axis rather than the x-axis. So it's the same curve, right? Let's draw it in. Okay. So our curve is still y equals 1 over x. We're still going to do the portion starting at, well, let's do a better job with that. Starting at x equals 1, going to x equals 2. So we get something like that. Okay. There's our curve. 1, 2, right? But this time, instead of revolving about the x-axis and going this way around, we're going to go this way around, right? So we draw sort of a mirror of our curve over here on this side, right? Starting at minus 1 and 1 and going down to minus 2 and a half. Something like that. And we, we draw on these disks, right? So, so here's that kind of first disk on top. Last one on the bottom. Right. And we'll draw sort of one intermediate one in between, looking something like that, right? OK, so this time we get, we get this particular solid here. You can kind of picture what it looks like there. So this time, here's the radius, right? So this time, what we're going to do, because we've oriented ourselves now vertically, right, we're revolving this way around, right? It's not the quite, quite the same as the picture that we had there, but we just have to kind of change our perspective and realize that, well, the radius of the circle here, right, this radius is now going to just be the x value, right? So radius is going to be x, but we want to write x as a function of y, right? So if y is equal to 1 over x, well, x then is, is 1 over y, okay? Not so bad. Okay, and what is the range of y values? We need to work that out as well, right? Um, where do we start and begin for our y values? Because now what we're going to do is we're going to say that the the area now as a function of y is going to be pi times the radius squared, so it's going to be pi over y squared, right? And we have to integrate with respect to y. Um, and so we realize, well, look, y, the biggest y value is actually, because we're dealing with this reciprocal function, the largest y value is actually at 1, right? Um, when x is equal to 2, y is equal to 1 half. So y is between one half and one. Okay. So with that in mind, we can set up the volume now, and the rest is pretty similar to what we did the last time around. Integral is going to be from one half to one, pi over y squared dy. The integration step, <coughs> same as before, minus pi over y. The only difference is Limits of integration are, are different, right? So we get minus pi over 1. Minus minus becomes plus. Pi divided by 1 half, right? Pi divided by 1 half dividing by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2. So we get pi plus 2 pi. So we get a value of pi for that integral, right? OK, so we get twice the volume that we got going around the x-axis, but that sort of makes sense. I think looking at the picture, this one is a little bit more stretched out, right? Um, it's believable, I think. Okay. All right. So there's a couple of volumes of, of revolution um, using this disk method, right? Once around the x-axis, once around the y-axis, right? Same approach either way. You just got to be careful, make sure that you set things up properly, and a picture often helps with that.